things he has done in your life, the things he's doing presently in your life, and the things that he will yet do in your life. Father, we appreciate you this morning. Choose to give you all the glory. For indeed, you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praises. You deserve all the honor, Lord. We honor you this morning, Lord. Take all the glory. For indeed, you deserve all the glory. We bring to you this morning all the glory that is due to you. Lord, we will not share in your glory. We refuse to share in your glory. Take all the glory and all the praises for all that you've done in our lives all that you're doing presently in our lives and all that you will yet do in our lives we honor you lord we glorify your name we glorify your name we worship you lord 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 Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. Have your way in our midst this morning. Take your place in our lives and in our hearts. Your name alone be glorified and be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 26 says, How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Hallelujah. So I have a song. We're all supposed to come with something. I hope you are with something. Ask your neighbor, did you come with something? Don't come empty handed. Hallelujah. When you are coming, brethren, when brethren are coming together, you come with what? Something. And you have the list here. You come with the psalm, come with a teaching, come with the tongue. Come with a revelation. Come with an interpretation. Hallelujah. So there's a song in my heart. I will just sing it. For I call up the next team that will be ministering. I've tried to shake this song away. But it has refused to leave. I will just sing it once or so. Hallelujah. I believe in miracles. I've seen a soul set free. Miraculous, the changing one. Redeemed through Calvary. I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn stars. And I believe in miracles. And I believe in God. I'll just sing it one more time. and I believe that anyone desires a miracle will receive a miracle this moment. I believe in miracles. I've seen no soul set free. Miraculous. 
the change in one redeemed through Calvary. I've seen the lily push its way up through the stubborn stone. And I believe in miracles. And I believe in God. Hallelujah. Through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we have access to the miraculous. That is available for everyone who choose to connect through faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We also have a team who has something for us. Came with something today. And that which they have, they are going to deliver it to us in a form of a drama. So this morning, we have the drama group known as Christ Image. They are here to present to us a, a drama piece titled, God Can Be Trusted. Let's make welcome Christ Image. Wow, what kind of life is this? Hey, I want to go inside. It was Buhari time. Ah, it's Tunubu. Ah. Walk, 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 walk. I'm tired. Tired. Ah. My back pain in me. Ah. My leg. Ah. Ah. Ah, no light. Ah, tired. Oh, oh. Oh, tired. I think I'll eat later. Let me just relax more. Small. Oh, ah, ah. Hello, dear. Can you imagine? Gas has finished. And I'm preparing the children for school. 12.5 kg is now 12,000 naira. And there's no kerosene in the stove for backup. How far? Daddy, daddy, the school authority said we should not return to school. school fees and also will not be allowed to write exams. Daddy, daddy, please pay our school fees. Please. Hello, brother. Hello, brother. Papa, I did go.
Because God has said it. <laughs> I am his child and I'm born to shine. Shine was his word and he still means it. <laughs> He's never. Ah ah! Brother Evie! Brother Evie, good morning! Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> ah, yesterday, yesterday, eh? as, you were, as you were coming from work, I saw you from the window. window. God is good for you. As you just enter, you have not taken just that fear. Mm. God is good for you. <laughs> Baby, mm. mommy came in. Uh, she and the children, she said we are going for holiday, just one week holiday meet them. Now she does not want to come back from Gamma's house. Uh, me, I trust myself. If she come back like this, me, I'll just call her my own things for mommy came <laughs> Baby, <laughs> this sun today, early morning sun. I like the way the sun is just shining. This kind of sun, this early Saturday. You see, now me, I've just finished sweeping my house. I said, let me just sweep the compound small. This kind of sun, you wash cloth, it's too dry. Wash cotton, dry. Wash bed sheets. Even papa, if you wash mattress, it's too dry. Mm. Hey, in this sun. Mm. Baby, <laughs> you're not saying anything, no. Say you're okay, Sha. Since my help do, hmm. Hmm. But I be. But I be. Hmm. Hope is not that you are taking thoughts for your life, Sha. Mm-hmm. Hope is not that you are taking thoughts for your life. What to eat? What to drink? What to wear? But I be look up, look up, look up, look up, look into the sky. See the birds. See the way they are flying. Fia! 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 They neither sow eh? nor reap. Mm-hmm. They do not stir into bands. Mm-hmm. Yet our heavenly father, me and you, me and, me and you, uh, our father takes care of them. How much more you and I? Mm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm. And lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct. The Lord shall direct your path. But I be wait. This God is good there. Eh? This God is good. As I was just sweeping the cup, and na 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 na, I just saw something mm-hmm. in that bush at the back there. Uh-huh. Coin. Which coin. Me, I like to pick old old things like old woman. <laughs> I like to pick old old things. I just saw this coin. I do not even know that God will use it to teach me to show you something this morning. By the way, do you know that this coin, this coin, this coin, in this same Nigeria, in those days, people kill for this coin. People lied for this coin. People stole because of this coin. People fornicated because of this coin. People, Papa, committed adultery because of this coin. Now, 
They have abandoned it in the bush. Whoa! Anybody that follows the system of this world, as the system is going, you will go with it. But I'll be wait. Let me ask you. Please wait. Okay. Sorry. Between this coin in my hand, this strong color coin, and this sun that is shining, early Saturday morning sun, which one big pass? What kind of question is that? The sun, of course. Thank you very much. So this, uh, this coin is not bigger than this sun, eh? Uh, uh, yes, now. It's not big. Thank you very much. But do you know that uh, there is a way that I will set this small coin? I will set it before my eye, eh? One kind of way. So, that this coin will cover this big sun. It will cover its pata, pata, pata. I will not see the sun. Do you know? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, you very correct. much. You, are correct. you see, all our situations, all our circumstances, all our challenges, all of them put together, they are like this coin. But there is a way that me and you, me and you, all of us, there is a way that we can choke it, set it before our eye. And it will block the sun. I mean the sun of righteousness. The glorified Jesus and Christ. This small thing, this small coin that cannot block this big sun. There is a way that our own challenges and situations and circumstances, we will set it before our eye like this. We will not see the magnified Jesus and Christ. You know what you should do? Rather than putting this coin before our eye, throw away the coin. And say to yourself, buy big coin. Say, set your, say, I set the Lord. I, I set the Lord. Always before my eyes. Always before my eyes. The Lord is at my right hand. The Lord is at my right hand. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. Say it where. Well. Say, I set the Lord. I set the Lord. Always before my eyes. Always before my eyes. The Lord is at my right hand. The Lord is at my right hand. Mio. Mio. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. Say it one more time. Say, I set the Lord. I set the Lord. Always before my eyes. Always before my eyes. The Lord is at my own right hand. The Lord is at my own right hand. Me. Me. I will not be moved. I will not be moved. <laughs> he will not allow your foot to be moved. Yeah. He will keep you will not slumber. The Lord is near unto all those who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not, and lean not up your own understand. In all your ways acknowledge him. Hey, nibble, 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 nibble. And he shall, nibble, and he shall nibble, direct. Nibble, what happens, sir? Neighbor, 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 Hey, I'm going. Ah, ah, ah. Thank you. Congratulations. Ah. Sing hallelujah. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, sing hallelujah. God be. Is it See how far you brought me. Is I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace all my days. I
Please come and pray for us. That word you gave to us when we were in prayer this morning, I'd like you to just pray for this, pray for all of us as a congregation, as the Lord will grant you utterance this morning. Please let us receive from the Lord this morning. Let our eyes be on him. Father, we thank you. Blessed Brenda, Nesta Kidibash, Ricky Basu, Brenda, Resta, Krista Banos, Brenda Teleke Dishte. Itariste Branos, Brenenes and Dinash to Brepedes, Lebre de Vashi Karuku Brebe de Vasika no Subrenes. Father, thank you, Manise Kalish de Bramos, Rekebanja Dabade, Makade Keanus, for an acceleration, an acceleration of your workings in our lives. In the name of your son Jesus Christ, Lebranis, the Kranish, the Bramine, Zendea, Indalusta, Brepede, Lubanis, the Bramoto, Koyatus. Are you not the one that bore the children of Israel on your wings, on eagles' wings? You bore them, Indonanis, Indaluku, Brene, 40 years. 
in the lade kebang bono each day you took care of them you fed them you clothed them many is a kishtak with danishtak with with mana that they did not know anything about bene sendus caprete bandelekesh ira subrene de keyanoto reke bandele kuto redesh de brane reke bande you remain the same yesterday today and forever your power has not diminished your might has not diminished lord you are not affected by by, by the things that confront us you are not limited you are not limited by the economies of this world you are bigger and greater than the economies of this world you are bigger and greater than the economies of this world so lord today let brene shekidiba mene sende reke yanos izakulo brene me sendurake herakuna nishtalabade thank you oh god as you bear us as you bear us oh god on your wings thank you oh god for an acceleration of your workings in our lives in our hearts in the name of your son jesus christ thank you oh god for bringing us oh god to that place you have for us yes oh god la brene kebi indiana thank you oh god la kita no sta brene in the ladu ste briade reke banu za crash the bread by the bandura ke de bas iraku ben de banis for pace oh god for acceleration oh god thank you oh god la you bring us to our high places in the name of your son jesus christ you bring us to our high places in the name of your son jesus christ you bring us into our high places in the name of your son jesus christ thank you oh god thank you thank you for peace thank you for peace thank you for acceleration thank you for you bring us to our high places we give you praise and thanks we we'll bless you we glorify you thank you heavenly father thank you for your hand that rests upon us your hand that enables us oh god to go through and overcome every obstacle, every circumstance, every situation. Thank you, O God, for even you are the one, O God, that enables, O God, the day to climb very difficult mountains. You are the one that gives pace to the gazelle. Thank you that you give pace to us. You accelerate your walkings in our lives in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Obstacles and mountains that look so insurmountable, you take us through them. We overcome them. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We bless your holy name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to be with you this morning. It's nice to see you all looking very well. Come on, wear a smile on your face. It's a good day. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Today you're singing that song in faith. Keze bube, see how far you brought me. Keze bube, I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see, I can tell, and I know it's your grace all my days. I will sing your praise. What you are seeing today in faith, you will see in reality shortly in the name of Jesus. Please listen to me very carefully this morning because... I want to say some things to you by the word of the Lord. I pray you have courage, courage to receive them. I, I, I must say that over the years, I've come to realize that what many, of, many, many have lacked when they hear me preach and teach the word is courage, courage to do the truth. So you content yourself with your arguments and you set it aside and you do what you think is safe. Well, I do it because I believe it. Pray that God will grant you courage. You have courage and do the things you will hear. But it is the doer of the truth, the doer of the word that is blessed. 
not just the hearer. So please listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. I'm so glad that the drama piece we watched was presented. I didn't even know about that, uh, but I was told yesterday evening that they wanted to do a drama, and when I heard the theme, I said, I'm very sure this, I don't know the storyline, but I'm very sure it's going to represent the message I want to communicate. So I'm so glad that that's been presented, so I don't need to go into all of that, because that drama piece simply exemplifies or represents what many of us are going through mentally. At the point, I just bent my head and was just in prayer because I just realized again that this is what people are going through and are suffering mentally. Now, you shouldn't be, but you are. You shouldn't be because you're, you're so children of God. You're not just children of God. Jesus is supposed to be your Lord and your master. And you have access to hearing the word of God for years, many of you. This season ought not to have taken us on our ways. These things happen to us because a lot of the times God speaks. It doesn't make sense to us what he's saying. So we'll put it aside. We're going to find out two years down the road, five years down the road, that what he said to you five years ago, what he was teaching you and instructing you five years ago is now needed. It's now needed. Apostle Paul said, Philippians 4.10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care. But you lacked opportunity. He said, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. These people, the Philippian church, had brought things to him. He didn't rejoice in them greatly. He rejoiced in the Lord greatly. That tells me something right away. That in that time of distress, his eyes were on the Lord. And when the Philippian church supplied the need, his joy, his rejoicing was in the Lord. He saw that as the intervention of God. He saw that as the intervention of God. I rejoiced greatly when I watched that drama because it communicated. What I wanted to get across first as the preamble to the things I want to say this morning. Not that I speak in regard to need. Here is a man that who is in need. Here is a man who is in need. People have supplied the need. And he's talking about rejoicing in the Lord. And he's telling the people who met the need that my rejoicing in the Lord that you have met this need is not because of the need. I'm not speaking because of the need. So what is Paul's evidence to us that it is not because of the need he is speaking? He tells us his evidence. He says, I've learned how to be content. In other words, when he was in distress, when he was in need, he was contented. 
Am I communicating, please? I have a very serious question for all of us. Right now, I ask you all individually, are you contented? Are you contented? Let me tell you what that means, the word to be contented. Let me get it out of my note, read it to our hearing, and then ask the question again. And please, as you listen to me, don't think for a moment that He doesn't understand. Doesn't feel it. You don't want to know my needs and my pressures. Don't think for a moment. To be contented is to be satisfied in oneself and with oneself. So I ask you, are you contented? Are you satisfied with yourself and in yourself? To be contented is to be peacefully happy. Are you happy? Are you at peace? Why are you not at peace? Paul said, I have learned how to be contented. So Paul learned how to be peacefully happy. Paul learned how to be satisfied in himself and with himself. He learned it. It means he was taught and he learned it. You can learn it. You can learn it. It is a state of true joy and fulfillment, satisfaction, and completeness in spite of trying situations, difficulties, and sufferings. By the way, are you aware that Apostle Paul wrote that letter in a prison? He was actually in a dungeon. He was expecting execution. He was to be executed was to be tried and executed. And he was telling the Philippian church that he doesn't even know what to choose. Whether to die or to live. Let me show it to you. I think it's my thoughts. Philippians chapter 1. Let me show it to you. Philippians chapter 1. If you have a Bible, turn there. Philippians chapter 1, I read from verse 19. For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance. Let me back up. To verse 12. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. So that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains, that's what he's talking about, my chains, is imprisonment. My chains are in Christ. It's for the sake of the gospel that I'm in chains, that I'm imprisoned, that I'm in this dungeon. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident by my chains. Uh, uh, by my chains, I'm much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from every, from even, from, uh, 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 even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ for selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposed to add affliction to my chains. But the latter out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice. Yes, I will rejoice. For I know that this, what? What? His chains. I know that this will turn out for my what? Deliverance. What will turn out for his deliverance? His chains. His imprisonment. I know. Can you see 
Can you see why the man says he's contented? He's in prison and he knows it will turn out for his deliverance. Through your prayer and the support of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope, and hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but with all boldness as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this will be from my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two. Having a desire depart and be with Christ which is far better nevertheless to remain in the flesh is more needful for you this man is discussing his execution his death is discussing he's telling you that he doesn't even know what to choose he's hard pressed I'm being confident of this I know that I shall remain and continue you all for your progress uh, faith that your rejoicing for me may be more abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again so I just wanted you to understand brethren that Paul wrote this letter from prison with the possibility of being tried and executed. And he said, I rejoice in the Lord greatly. And he said, I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Look at verse 12. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. He's telling you that even in the dungeon, in the prison, where I am right now, I know how to be a beast. I know how to be a beast. I know how to bound. I know how to be contented. I know how to be contented. That's what Paul is saying. I know how to be contented. And I, I'm, I've told you the meaning again. I'm giving you the meaning of the word contented. I know how to be satisfied in myself and satisfied with myself. I know how to be peacefully happy. I know how to be in a state of true joy, fulfillment and satisfaction and completeness. That sense of completeness, satisfaction and fulfillment regardless of location. Regardless of the season. Paul says I've learned it. If Paul learned it, we can learn it. Well, I don't know about you, but I've made up my mind to learn it. And I made up my mind years ago, more than 30 years ago, to learn this. To learn in whatever state I am and wherever I find myself to be contented, to be fulfilled, to be in pure joy, peace, a state of peace and a state of rest. You can learn it. It's not exclusive. It's not for pastors. It's for God's children. The Bible talks about laboring to enter into his rest. We can enter his rest. We can enter his rest in the midst of the chaotic economy that we live in. The other day I wanted to buy a bag of rice and I was told it's 68,000. You know, and I like, I like mathematics, so I did the maths. In 2014, 2015, it was 8,000. 68,000 naira is eight and a half times eight. So the price of rice has gone up eight and a half times from 2015 to 2023. What a wonderful day to be alive. See, you can't laugh. <laughs> Nobody see it here. <laughs> what a wonderful day to be alive. So I was lying down and thinking, and I said, wow, eight and a half times. If everything has gone up between that time and now eight and a half times, question, have people's incomes gone up eight and a half times? You answer too fast. Because I now ask you a dangerous question. Why?
eight and a half times. Very interesting. Hallelujah. To be contented is to be satisfied in oneself and with oneself. To be peacefully happy. It is a state of true joy and fulfillment, satisfaction and completeness in spite of trying situations, difficulties and sufferings. You saw it dramatized. So that the person lives free of complaints. So I ask all of you, are you contented? Meaning, are you free of complaints or are you saturated with complaints are you full of complaints do you live your every waking moment and every opportunity you have to speak complaining and talking and complaining because on, on a serious note there is so much available to complain about am I correct nobody is talking to me am I correct yes so much to complain. I just told you now 60 rice, bag, bag of rice, Red Bull. Because that's the brand, Red Bull. 68,000 naira. So after I did my own calculation and saw that it was eight and a half times, I was grateful to God that I could buy it. When it was 8,000, I couldn't. Now it's 68, I can. Should I not be grateful to God? Ah. Uh, it's how you choose to see. That, you see, that drama piece we watched was so powerful. Incidentally, I was listening. I wasn't actually watching. But I actually know the signs. As large as the sun is, a small coin, there's a way you position a small coin, you won't see the sun again. Unless you remove the coin. Our challenges and our problems are like the small coin. But that's what we use to block the view of God. So we don't see him. And we don't see his glory. We don't see his power. And yet we, have the, we, we, we don't have the courage to throw away the coin. We think that if we hold the coin and keep looking at it long enough, it will change the situation. It won't change it. Keep looking at the problem and looking at the difficulty. And looking at the impossibility, it's not going to change anything. The courage to throw it away and see God and look at God. That's what many of us lack. So everything I'm saying to you today, as you are hearing it, be telling yourself you need courage. Exercise courage. 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 Your problem is courage. Courage. This thing he's saying is simple, but the problem is courage. Because that's really the issue. Contentment is a state of the inward man in spite of the experiences and the location of the outward man. I tell you, brethren, look. Uh, the first time I traveled out of Nigeria uh, after our family returned from the UK was in 1992. Uh, when I traveled in 1992, I went to the United Kingdom, stayed there for about a week, then went to the US, was there for about two weeks. Uh, one week, my pastor, Bishop Lubitaif, was ministering, so I was there to be with him. After one week, he said I should stay and study the ministry and what was going on to study that ministry where we were. And I stayed there for one week. Then I came back to the UK, stayed one week, and came back to Nigeria. When I was in the aircraft flying into the country, into Nigeria, I was very angry. Almost throughout that flight. Very angry with our leaders. I thought that Nigerian leaders are very wicked. Because suddenly, I, now as an adult, I've now seen how other environments are. And I was really, really angry. And, but one of my utmost desires as I was flying in was that every Nigerian will have the opportunity to leave this country and go and see other climes. Because many of us, some of us think that this is all there is. Our environment can be better. 
Our environment can be better. That's the truth. Our environment can be better. And it just dawned on me how selfish and how wicked people have been who have led us. How they have tacitly worked together. The, the, I call them is the elite consensus to keep the general populace down so that they can be oppressed and controlled and manipulated. Now, the reason I told all of this is to tell you that in my heart, I really would love everybody to have the chance to go to different parts of the world. To be honest, traveling is education. It should be education. So every one of you that has the means, the resources, and the opportunity to go on holiday and go and visit other places, please do. You need it. You actually need to see other places. Unfortunately, Nigeria itself now has become rather insecure. Otherwise, also going around this country is very important. Go to other parts of the country. Go and travel around. Go to other states. Go and relate with other pe people of other tribes in their land. In their land. Not in Lagos. You don't know the Igbos by living with them in Lagos. Go to, uh, go to Agluzigo and go and stay there. Go to Oran. Go to Bauchi. Go to Jos. Go to Sokoto. Go to Malumfashi. Go and sit down with Nigerians. And you'll see that Nigerians are wonderful people. Nigerians in their natural habitat, in their home, they are hospitable. I've not been to any part of Nigeria that the Nigerians are not hospitable people. There is no part. And I've been to all parts of the country. I think the only part of the country I've not been to is my degree. So traveling is good and all of that. But I said all of that to say this is where I'm going to. Everybody cannot go to Europe and everybody cannot go to America and everybody will not go to Australia and everybody will not go to Canada. In other words, everybody cannot jackpa. Is it jackpa? 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 Okay, jackpa. Everybody can't. Because everybody doesn't have the opportunity, everybody doesn't have the means, everybody doesn't have the, uh, the network. That will make it happen. That's the truth. So the question is, those of us who can't go and are here, are we trapped? Are we going to live the rest of our lives in sorrow, in despair, in disenchantment, in frustration? No. No. That's on one hand. On the other hand, my wife used to tell, you know, recently my wife has always been reminding me of something that Archbishop Benson Dawsa used to say those days. He says that a lizard in Nigeria doesn't suddenly become a crocodile because he goes to America. A lizard in Nigeria is a lizard in America. It's just that it's a fat lizard. But still a lizard. In other words, your capacity does not automatically, automatically change. Just because you've gone abroad. So please, I want to ask all of you, please do me a favor. This is another tough one I want to say. Please do me a great favor. Stop relating with anybody who is outside this country with any sense of inferiority. It is wrong. You're not inferior. Stop it. And stop begging. Stop it. Stop thinking that when somebody enters the aircraft and tells you he has got visa and is going to England, that his life has suddenly become better than yours. And that he has now become a superior mortal. Come out of those. You see, it is, I'm addressing these things very strongly because these are the things that are keeping many of you in sorrow. I was telling the pastors today, I've come around now, I'm looking at everyone, and you all act, actually you all look well, but you don't even know. Thank God you know. You actually all, I'm serious. I'm, you actually look well outwardly, but I know that inwardly you are in sorrow and anguish. <laughs> <laughs> and 
you cannot look well like this if you are not eating. Even though cost of food has gone up several times, but you are still eating. Won't you thank God for the food on the table? Let's open our mouth and say, Father, thank you for the food on the table. At least the one, even if it's the only one, the one you are going to eat this afternoon, if that's all there is, or the one you ate in the morning, thank God for it. Open your mouth. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Thank God for it. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, Amen. So, right now, this is our location. Right now. So, we have to be content. We have to be contented people in this location called Lagos. Or in Lagos, Nigeria. I came in on Monday. When I came in, the whole place was smelling from the airport. Everywhere we smelling. Got into the estate here. There was no light. I told myself, welcome. I wasn't sad. No, I'm serious. I wasn't sad. I saw the bad roads, the bumpy roads. I was happy to be back. I'd been dreaming of being back three, four weeks ago. I'm not going to be subdued mentally by the environment. It is not going to happen. I'm not going to be subdued mentally by this environment. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That if there is no light, if there is no light, and I don't have, I don't have fuel to put, I, I cannot power my generator and all of that, then I'm going to find something constructive and creative to do with my mind in the dark. I'm not going to mourn and grieve and groan and murmur and complain. I know what I can do in the dark. Not with no light and I can't read and I can't watch anything. I, I know what I can do. I know what I do. My mind does not need light to be walking. I can think. I can analyze. I can visualize. I can plan. I can strategize. My mind can be busy doing creative work when there is no light. So sitting down and grumbling and murmuring and all. I'm not going to join people in that. I just told myself, welcome home. Thank God. It's a good day. God is here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you with me, brethren? How many people do we know who are not complaining about their lives and their fate? F-A-T-E. My younger brother told me of a friend, a, a, a friend he knew, who the family was in the UK in the 60s and all his older siblings were born in the UK. And um, his mom was pregnant for him when they came into the country, when they came back to Nigeria. <laughs> His mom was carrying him in the belly when they returned to Nigeria. Well, when things started going south in Nigeria, all his siblings went to the High Commission, British High Commission, got their British passports and left the country. He was left alone with his parents <laughs> every day. <laughs> we charge him for the border. Why did you come back with me this time? Why didn't you wait and deliver me first? See now. I wonder how many of us are complaining about our lives. I'll be honest with you, brothers and sisters. If I'm to sit down and look at my life and look for the things to complain about, I'll fill a book. There's nobody that doesn't have something in his life to complain about. But I want to remind you again of that drama site. You can use the coin. You're looking at the coin and use it to block the sun. But you see this same human being you sit down every day and you are complaining about. He is a genius. 
Let me tell you this for free. I have taught many children in this church mathematics over the last 28 years. Different kinds of children. Some were very bad. They were terrible. In fact, some you could call them idiots when it comes to mathematics. Some were relatively good. Some were very good. Some were just complete ignoramus. They didn't, didn't know anything. I've taught different kinds of children mathematics. The shocker for me has been, I've not yet met one child that is not brilliant. Not one yet. No matter the state they were in when we met, after a while of engagement, their brilliance comes out. They conquer maths. If I know one particular boy, he was so bad, I told his dad, to just let, let me have him for a week or two. So we spent some time together. By the time he resumed school that term, he became the one teaching his classmates mathematics. Anytime the teacher is teaching something and the classmates can't get it, then he explains it. But this is what caught my attention. There was no child that I actually taught. I only leveraged on their respect, you see, their love, two things, their love for me and their fear of me. I leveraged on it and made them study. There is nobody sitting down here that is not a genius. Now, I've also worked with several people in Redeem Love Chapel from 95 to date, several men, women, young, old, on different kinds of projects. I've not yet met a dollar. I've not yet met someone that is not brilliant and creative, intelligent. I've, I've not met one, no. And I'm not flattering. I've not met one. I've not met one. A lot of the things you see in Redeem Love Chapel is the input of people's brilliance. What I just have is wisdom. And the wisdom is I have the ability to identify people's brilliance and genius and harness it and show them how to add it to what we are doing. That's all. That's the, all the work I do. I want to make someone who's not brilliant. You are, you are so brilliant, you don't even know. Unusual abilities of God inside you that will subdue any environment, any location where you find yourself. You cannot be hindered, limited, held back by any environment where you find yourself. This is the honest truth. Say, God says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceed the issues of life, the forces of life. They're inside you. Everything you need is inside you, the resources are inside you. I'm not, Tony, it's like saying to you, Tony, it's like saying you are a man. Then somebody says, I'm flattering you. Am I flattering you? Brightness, you are a handsome man. Is that flattery? Is that flattery? <laughs> it's because a handsome man. I said that because when two of them walked in, I, I spotted them. As soon as they walked in, I saw them when they walked in. I stood there and said, so, wow, these guys look good, man. So, that's the reality. I'm only now speaking about what is inside you that is not outside. Am I coming again? That's what I'm talking about. And I'm saying that because I want you to see it. I want you to become aware of it. I know we live in an environment that tries to you know, uh, suppress us and, and make us feel that we're not good enough and that we don't have what it takes and, and all of that. But it's not true. It's not true. And you have to rise up against that. We have to. And I'm saying this to all of us because the truth is if you don't look at yourself properly, Rather than being happy with yourself, you'll be complaining against yourself. So you won't be contented.
Paul says, everywhere and in all things, I have learned. Paul is saying that he learned how to be peacefully happy, satisfied, and have true joy, and have a true feeling of fulfillment and completeness in the face of different circumstances. So Paul is saying, simply telling us that right there in the prison, in the dungeon where he was, expecting to be tried and facing the possibility of being executed, that he has learned how to be peacefully happy. In that prison, he was peacefully happy. Satisfied. Had true joy. And had a total true feeling of fulfillment and completeness in the prison. These are not high sounding nonsense. There are possibilities in our lives. Praise God. I said praise God. I said praise God. So Paul learned it. We too can learn it. We too can learn it. And I truly want all of us to learn it. I remember sharing these things with us virtually, but now I want to share it you know, in person and uh, pray that you will get it. In times of abasement, what we tend to do as human beings is question the love of God, query the presence of God in our lives, doubt the existence of God, get confused and depressed, berate ourselves, our lives and our existence. We shouldn't be doing that, but that's what we tend to do. Be surprised that some people here just don't understand why, they, they are, why their forefathers were not taken as slaves to America. If their forefathers were taken as slaves, they would have been Americans by now. You'd be surprised that some people have taught it. I won't ask for hands, don't worry. Be surprised. Some get suicidal. Some give up on the possibility of better days and resign to fate. And you know, our circumstances have not even been helped. When you think about the, uh, the last elections, how the judicial electoral system has worked and the judicial system has worked, you combine that with the difficult economy we are going through, it just, it's, it's, it, it creates disenchantment. Am I correct? Nobody's talking to me again. This is because I've, I've mentioned politics. We are political animals. We live in a world. We live in a real world. We live in a world where political order, social order, economic order are part of what we see every day. And they affect our minds. So if you don't address them and address your mind to them and take your position in the spirit... You have problems. I've taken my position in the spirit. My kingdom is not of this world. That's my position in the spirit. That's my response to everything that's been going on politically. And by the way, I hope you know that the political tensions even in Nigeria are mild compared to the ones in America, for example. It's terrible. The other day, some two friends, the <laughs> tense argument, I was just looking at them. Everybody, one is on the uh, side of Democrats, one is on the side of Republicans. See tension. Stop looking at them. I was telling him, I said, thank God, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm from the kingdom of God. <laughs> my aspirations and visions are defined by the kingdom of God. Seriously. If you don't do that, this world will keep throwing you up and down. Have you noticed now that Russia, Ukraine war is no more in the news? Have you noticed? I did not see fighting. Why is it not in the news? Because another one has come. That's how the world keeps tossing everybody's mind. Be following news. Be following them. My kingdom. <laughs> Nobody is talking to me. My kingdom is not of this world. That's, that's the truth. I'm not going to allow. 
While I pray for a better country, I pray for us to be ruled well. I pray for us to have good governance. I pray for us to have a good environment. I pray for us to have a great economy. I pray for us to have good health system. I pray for us to have good educational system. I pray for security and safety in our roads. I pray for the restoration of our infrastructure, road infrastructure, transport infrastructure, electricity, uh, uh, telephony, and all these things. Good air, good air, clean environment, proper waste management. I pray for all of those things to become a reality in our country. My kingdom, my kingdom is your kingdom of this world. If you put your heart here, it will be broken in pieces. Some of us give up on the possibility of better days and resign to faith. Some of us begin to believe all kinds of superstitions. All kinds. All kinds. All kinds. And when I talk like this, people think that some people say, oh, pastor, you know you are not born in the village. If you are born in the village and you grew up in the village, you will know that witches are real, that evil forces are real, that this is real, that this, this, this. I've just been looking at I've just been laughing. I don't know about evil forces. You know about evil forces more than me. Very good. Continue. See your ways. Be chasing evil forces. Leave all kinds of terrible superstitions. Every time I want to do a business, once this brother visits me and greets me, that's it. He scatters. Why are you noticing it, Seth? You're a woman, you're age 40, no man has proposed to you in the last 10. They have not even said, uh, hello, sister, how are you? They have poured excrement on you in the spirit. And you too, you believe such nonsense. So in the spirit, you are smelling. Who said so? And you believe such nonsense. You believe such nonsense. That what happens to us. We, you know, we, we, we embrace all kinds of useless superstitions. Go with me to first Samuel. Just going to share this with us. And then I'll pick it up from here next Sunday. Just want to encourage us. Keep our sights on God. See how far you brought me. You know, I heard that song. Was it was it the was it Wednesday they sang that song about Thursday in that church? Thursday. I heard this song that Thursday, and I said, Ah! But I, I wish I knew this song. I would have sang it on Sunday. I come to church. Love it. So I turned to Van Dyke who was with me, and he said that yeah, that he knows the song that they sang it at uh, Iba. I said, ah, that's good. Only to come here and hear it. You see, for, for, for someone like me, such, ma such manifestations are manifestations of God. They tell me God is with me. They tell me God is walking with me. That, they tell me that I'm living a scripted life, a script that is divine. So you is simple. You see, it, you see and, and this is my point, brethren. I'm calling attention because, because it, what I've just described happens to all of us. It's not peculiar. It's just that I, I take notice of the one that is happening in my life and celebrate it. You ignore your own. You are living a scripted life. That's the truth. 
there are divine arrangements taking place in your life. But your own, you dismiss it because of the, the house rent. The news of the house rent. <laughs> or children's fees. Am I communicating? So you dismiss your my own. In spite of that news of house rent, I still remember that. Ah, this is a divine script. Can you imagine? Song I'm looking for. God, God, has, God has prepared the, the choir to sing it. First Samuel 16. I want to use David as an example to show all of us what you should be doing in times of abasement. I've tried to address our mental state. Everything I've been saying since has been to address our mental state, our inward state. Now, in that proper mental state, I want to show you physically what we all should be doing. And everybody should be doing now. Now. Everybody. Now. First Samuel 16. Now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord, then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one I named to you. So Samuel did what the Lord said and went to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, do you come peaceably? And he said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. So it was when they came that he looked at Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because I have refused him, for the Lord does not see as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the, the Lord looks at the, I told you I've been addressing the state of your heart. As it responds to what is going on around you. So Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Thus, Jesse made his seven sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, are all the young men here? Now, this is very serious. A national leader, you see, Samuel was the leader of the nation of Israel at the time. Regardless of where you stand politically, if the president of Nigeria comes to your house now, will you not consider that a privilege? No, think about it. Let's, let's take all of us who are in Navy Town. The president of Nigeria decides that he's coming to Navy Town. Sorry, did I say Navy Town? Leave Navy Town. Central Bank Estate 2. That's the estate to visit. Am I not correct? That's actually what was in my mind. The, the president of Nigeria is coming on a visit to Central Bank Estate 2. And when he arrives... He says to you, bring your sons. Will you leave anyone? Eh? You will bring all. But you don't know what he has in mind. David was left out. That's serious. David was actually left out. That tells me a lot about David's place in that family. 
how David was treated, how David was seen. We're not giving any detail, but that's, that is loaded. That is loaded. It took Samuel for Jesse to remember David. Are these all your sons? Eh, well, there remains yet one. The young man. And there he is, keeping the sheep. Samuel said, send and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him, him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him for this is the one. And Samuel took the oil. So what happened was that as David was walking, as David walked in like this, the Lord just said to Samuel, that's him. He just got up in the presence of everybody. Jesse and his sons, everybody, he just anointed David, bam. That's when everybody knew what he came for. Until that time, nobody actually knew why Samuel was in that place. You know what's striking to me? I said, I'm going to pick up from here next week. David was busy in the field tending sheep when he was sent for. He was busy. He was working. I noticed something about Jacob, Joseph, David, and Daniel. All these four men experienced abasement, humiliation, degradation. They were cheated. They were maligned. They were put down. All of them. They suffered it. Jacob said his wages were changed 10 times. 10 times. Joseph was set up and thrown into a dungeon and abandoned there. But I noticed something common about all of them. They were always busy working and they were diligent. All of them. Many years ago, we finished service. Well, in this hall, we finished service. Ruben is there. And we were, I was going to my seat and we got, I got somewhere here and we got talking. I was standing around this place when we got talking. And he said to me, you know, this Joseph story that we always talk about from uh, prison to palace, prison to palace. And the truth of the matter is that Joseph, the man who experienced it, didn't know anything about palace when he was in prison. He didn't know that he was going to be in the palace. You are the one who is reading now and knew that he would be in the palace. Joseph didn't know that he would be in the palace. Then he said something that caught my attention and he dramatized it. He, he, he acted it when he said it. He said that the truth is that the miracle of Joseph was not his being in the palace, but how he conducted himself all through that season. That mental stability, that state of rest, that state of peace. There be some of us, by the time we come to the palace, we have had stroke. I can remember, I still remember his face. He did a stroke right, like this. Because of pressure, because of the pressure of the mind. We have come out, but we have come out sick. The miracle is that Joseph came out, he was not sick. He was still mentally strong. I never forget that conversation. Every time I read Joseph ever since, I always think of that. I always think of that. Brothers and sisters, tomorrow morning, many of you are going to wake up. All of us are going to wake up to get to work. Please make sure you wake up and get to work. You must be diligent at your work. You must be serious with your work. Whatever the work is. I'm not the definer of the work. And I didn't design it. But whatever that work is. Be diligent and be serious and be punctual. And get about your work. And stop grumbling. And stop murmuring. And stop thinking about how much they are paying you and they are not paying you. Just do your work. All these men that God lifted out or lifted up in the time of abasement. Go and read the stories yourself. They were, they were busy. They were, not, they were busy. 
and diligent in their station. Please, let's all wake up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Is it?